ask an attorney about Florida law. Ask an attorney, just give him a call. This is Ask an Attorney, all about ask Florida law attorney. with attorney Joe Pippen. If you have a legal ask question, call Joe right now in Tampa. Call 813-287-5700. Anywhere else, toll free at 877-943-9673. That's 877-943-9673. The law office is open. And now your host, Joe Pippen. Hey, good morning. Welcome to Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law. I'm attorney Joe Pippen, practicing attorney. The law office is open. If you have a legal question of any type, Give us a call. That's what we're here for, to answer legal questions, solve problems if we can. Doesn't even have to be a legal problem. It can just be a problem you're situated with or in the middle of. If you'd like to call the show, you have a toll-free number, which is 877-943-9673. That's 877-943-9673. Phone lines are open. Always like that first call coming in. Your question can be about just about anything. It can be about wills, trust, probate, guardianship, power of attorneys, health care surrogates, living wills. It can be about family law. It can be just about any real, you know, landlord-tenant. If you have a problem, if you have a legal question, somebody you want just to talk to to be able to uh, give some direction to you and maybe just discuss it with you a little bit, something you really couldn't sleep last night, something's worrying you. Give us a call. We're here to help as many people as we possibly can. And hopefully your question will help other people too. As many, many people have similar circumstances <clears throat> and face, um, we all face legal issues and problems together. And the more you have someone to talk to to help you, the more, the more you're going to feel, the better you're going to feel. At least you have a direction to follow. So again, I'm attorney Joe Pippen, host of Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law for over 34 years now. If you would like to uh, call the show, you have a toll-free number, 877-943-9673. 877-943-9673. And be more than glad to uh, try to help you. Well, one of the more interesting uh, things that happened this week, because, you know, a lot of things I do uh, on a pretty regular basis, all, it's always new, always love meeting new people and helping new people, new clients. Uh, once in a while, I get something I have never dealt with. Uh, and this week, one, one of those things happened. So the gentleman comes in. He had a child. When he was um, young, I don't know how off. Did not not sure. Ask him how old he was. The uh, the mother basically told him, the mother of the child and the mother's mother told him that they would take care of it. So I'm not sure he knew exactly what all that meant. But you know, 30 years later or so, I don't know the time frame. I'm not going to mention states or anything like that. Uh, he gets a letter. And basically, the daughter is now looking for him. So he also gets a letter from the state where all this was happening, wanting to know if he was so-and-so born on a certain date. So, uh, and the daughter, so the daughter, person saying she was a daughter, wanted to come down to Florida and meet with them. So all this is pretty shocking news, something in his past he hadn't thought about for a long time. And uh, he knew that the person had been, I think he knew the person had been adopted out at a very young age. But get a letter from the state, from an agency. I don't think it was a, it was a private agency. And then he uh, gets a letter from the, the child. So anyway, I called the agency and he wanted to, uh, for me to do that to, to see what they wanted basically. And so, but the bottom line was it all had a happy ending and it was something that he was concerned about and something that was uh, fairly easily taken care of by somebody calling, not mentioning his name and trying to get more information. All right, let's go to uh, Iris in Winter Haven. Hey, Iris. Hi, Joe. Thanks for taking my call. Um, my mother had a revocable trust 
actually mother and dad both had them. Dad's passed on, but mother had one. Uh, uh, back in 1997, it was drawn up. Her uh, attorney has soon, I mean, has recently retired. Uh, she, from time to time, she changes her mind about, she's almost 103, by the way. Wow. <laughs> Will be the end of this month. Um, she keeps changing her mind about wanting to give more to, uh, to um, uh, oh, good grief. I can't even think. I get nervous when I get on the radio. <laughs> To um, charitable organizations, okay. not not so much individuals, but charitable organizations. All right. And um, in fact, the other day uh, she was she was being a little what do I want to say frugal about something. I said, "Mom, you mm-hmm. know you don't have to be frugal." <clears throat> she said, and I reminded her about you know how much her estate was going to be. So she said, oh, I need to do some more for this one or, the, you know, this organization or that organization. And I said, Mom, every time we've done that, it's, it's meant a trip to the attorney. You know, he has to redo something, you know, every time. So I was wondering, it, she cannot get out now. She fell and mm-hmm. broke her hip. She cannot get out. She's still, she's still with it mentally. But um, is there some way that we could um, either type something out or write something out and have it or her write something out and have it notarized or something put with her. She's got a pour over will. Um, yeah, so. well, rut- routinely when I get a question like that, say, to my office, they'll ask, can arrangements be made to have the document uh, prepared with the person never leaving the home? Mm-hmm. And I get I can get the information from the person, maybe get a copy of the document, do an amendment. Uh, I can be present telephonically. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we just have to orchestrate the witnesses and the two witnesses and, and the notary. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, a document can be done for a 103-year-old in their home without leaving the home. <laughs> I don't think I would recommend that you tr- you try to prepare the document yourself because mm-hmm. okay. there's a certain formality um, to the document in that it need be done properly, and really, um, I, I do this all the time. So mm-hmm. Okay. So... Manny, I'd get with you and give you the particulars. You'd yeah, I need a copy of the trust. Uh huh. Okay. And then uh, just to, I'll be able to talk to her on the phone and get what she wants to do. Then I'll be able to do a, a proper amendment. Okay. Alrighty. Thank you so much. Hey, what station are you listening to there in Winter Haven? Uh, I'm not sure. It's ninety point three on. Oh, ninety point three. Uh huh. Do you happen to know when their telethon starts? Uh, you no. heard anything about that? Okay. No, I don't. Uh-uh. All right. Well, maybe one of our other listeners on 90.3 <laughs> can call and tell me because I was thinking it was this week, uh, coming this week, but I'm not sure. So now I need to find out. Um, okay. I can call them Monday, but if anybody knows, give me a call. Okay, dope. All right. Thanks. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Thank you. Let's go to uh, Don in Winter Haven. Hello. Hey, Don. Good morning to you. Thank you. Uh, listen, I just have one uh question here Mm -hmm. i lost my wife about a year ago and we did have wills made up Mm -hmm. my question is if i get married i I have the house going to my grandkids and my daughters Mm -hmm. if i get married and of course i pass away Mm -hmm. is that is that will voided does that go to my wife or does the will still stay intact well, your wife, the answer is your wife has certain statutory rights as a spouse unless they're waived if you do a pre, pre-marital agreement. So, a spouse, okay. for example, your spouse would have the right to live in your home for life. Okay. And she'd have the, or, or she'd have the right to sell it and take half the proceeds. I, well, that's what I've heard. That's what I thought also, but I wanted to get it from yeah. you. So. Yeah, so you need a premarital agreement. Also, once you die and you um, the pre the, the 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 life estate takes a life of its own. So basically, she could live there for life, but when she died, it would go to your children, not your grandchildren, regardless of what the will would say. Oh, I, oh really? I see. Okay. So, so well, you need to get a premarital agreement, then you can do whatever you want to do. She waives her right to it. You could even give her a year to stay there if you wanted to while she relocates or whatever. 
But the premarital agreement puts you in a position to do whatever you want to do. If you don't have a premarital agreement, then you're stuck with uh, her being a, having the right to sell it or live there for life, and then it takes a life of it on, on to your own children. Okay. Well, I'm 80 years old, and chances of me marrying again is pretty slim, but I just wanted to cover the basics. Well, if you do, if you do, it, you can uh, get her to waive the right with a, with a premarital agreement, and then, then you All can right, do whatever you want to with the property. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. All right. Thank you. You're listening to Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law. I'm Attorney Joe Pippen, practicing attorney. The law office is open. Phone lines are open right now if you want to call the show at 877-943-9673. 877-943-9673. Phone lines are opening. I was thinking about something else that happened in the law office this week uh, that I'd like to share with you. So I get this call that uh, one of my new clients that I just met you know, recently called me about his father and his father was in the hospital and his father was under hospice care and his father was dying and he didn't his father didn't have a will so now there's an urgent need for a will so um, so I had him tell the father to call call me and tell me the information independent from him he shouldn't be in the room and everything because I thought he would might be favored somehow in this document which um, so anyway the father calls me on Thursday I prepare all the documents send a m one of my uh, employees who is a paralegal slash notary to get the document signed and guess what we got to the hospital and the gentleman was not responsive he's still living but he couldn't answer questions he couldn't get up he couldn't write the nurses there at the hospital said that he had taken a downturn. So uh, we stayed, my paralegal stayed there for over a half an hour waiting for another friend to show up. And he never was responsive and he had to leave saying that um, it, without the document signed. So now what happened the nurse the the friend showed up about a half an hour later after my employee left there and had been talking to the nurses and they changed his medication drastically and she thought the medication was the reason he was non-responsive today and that he would get better so uh, basically i've still not gotten that phone call that he's gotten any better yet to send somebody over to do the will but here's the thing if you're if you're listening to the show and you don't have your state planning documents done there's no reason to put it off. I always tell people it's not going to get cheaper. It's not going to be, get easier to understand. And you should uh, get documents done. I mean, you have your you work your whole lifetime, you accumulate assets, you want to have a plan on how they get distributed. And if you put it off, put it off, put it off, the same thing could happen to you that happened to this gentleman. Whether he's ever going to get uh, better enough to, he's under hospice care, so... The window is fairly short. Whether he's ever going to get better enough to be able to sign these documents, well, we'll see. But why wait till the last minute and put stress on everybody in this circumstance and then never have a document? Hey, you're listening to Attorney Joe Pippa and Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law. If you'd like to call the show, phone lines are open at 877-943-9673. Nine six seven three, phone lines are open, and we'll be more than glad to try to help you in any way we possibly can. If you'd like to uh, have more information about estate planning, we have this free poster sheet. It's a full-size poster sheet, double-sided uh, poster sheet. There are articles all about estate planning, all of your choices, comparisons on what you can do, comparisons of the consequences of what you choose. Uh, is uh, also has on one side their website information they're all about about our attorneys their names all of our locations we have all locations uh, all through Pinellas Hillsboro um, down in Lakewood Ranch Polk County we have uh, on the east coast from St. Augustine up to Jacksonville if you have a question uh, or would like to make an appointment or like to get this poster sheet here's the three methods you can get that you can call our toll-free office number 
1-800-226-3529. You can email me your name and address at joe, J-O-E, at A-T-T-Y, P-I-P dot com. That's joe at A-T-T-Y, P-I-P dot com. Or you can text me your name and address at 727-667-3967. Let's go to uh, Darcy in Largo. How are you? Hey, Darcy. Um, my question is, I'm in the process of uh, purchasing a home, and um, I was going to put my fiancé, because um, we've been together for a long time, uh, as a joint tenancy with survivorship. Mm -hmm. uh, now... Um, one of the reasons we haven't married is because he has he hasn't filed his taxes in a couple of years, so that's not happening until he does that. But my question is, can IRS put a lien on the property if his name is on the deed? The IRS can is the one organization that can penetrate anything and can get by all the uh, homestead protection uh, statute that the home is exempt from creditors. The IRS is an exception. That's what so, I was thinking. Yep. Okay. So, my, so I would probably tell you not to do that, or recommend you not do that. Gotcha. Okay. Well, thank you very much. You've answered the question that's uh, been on my mind. I appreciate. Yeah, it. you might have. Uh, if you sign a joint tax return, you know that could be an issue too. No. But you're not married, so that's. We're both single. Yeah. yeah and you're not going to get married, I guess. Not until the tax things resolve. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. All, All right. right. Well, you have a great weekend. Thanks. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Let's go to Van in Tampa. Good morning, Joe. Uh, thank you for your show. I really enjoy it. I have two questions. First, if you have a lease agreement uh, for rental of property, how many witness signatures are required? And my second question concerns a trust. Uh, should the life insurance policies be included in your trust? Well, let's answer the second one first. Life insurance uh, has, you can name beneficiaries that avoid probate. So if you're going to give an outright distribution to someone, you can just do that directly to avoid probate instead of having to come into the trust to avoid probate. If you have uh, beneficiaries that you don't want to get a lump sum distribution all at once, you can have the beneficiary be the trust, and then the trust can add stretch provisions uh, the stretch provisions, how the money would be distributed out over time. So it's really a choice. But, but either way would avoid probate. Having it coming into the trust, it's most common if you want to do that just because you want to control the money somehow and not have an outright distribution. The uh, uh, the lease, I, the best thing to do is to have to, is to have two witnesses on a lease. Thank you, Joe. All right. Thank you. Let's go to uh, Rudy in Haines City. Yes, thank you. I will receive approximately five hundred k, five hundred thousand from the sale of my house above the two hundred fifty thousand dollar exemption. Can I stagger that out and just say ten years or at least five years with the IRS, or does it have to be lump sum where I'll pay all the taxes at once? No, you can stagger out the money to pay less taxes, you know, per year, on as you okay. receive it. So well, I can um, I uh, can get together with my tax uh, preparer and uh, do that. Correct. Yeah. Well, get the information from your tax preparer on what what would be best for them to do the return, and if you not have to pay the um, tax on the money okay. except over Remember. a period of time. So basically, uh, you would take uh, you would sell it to someone who uh, would give you the down payment of what you want, say the 250 and probably give you a promissory note or a mortgage would be better on the remainder over a period of years. I've already sold the house. It's in promise to, to, promise to buy right now. So I will receive in approximately a month's time the, the proceeds, I guess you call it. But I just want to know that I can stagger out what's over and above the Well. well you yourself, you've already sold it. Yes. All right. So, but you, there's no, uh, a, there's no agreement that you'll take a mortgage back and receive payments over time, though, right? 
there is no mortgage involved. Yeah, so you might you might have waited too late or done the wrong thing on just doing the contract itself. Yes. So I'll get 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 with your CPA and get the uh, you know you might be able to modify the agreement in the way of payment, but if you're going to take all the payment at once and just put it in the account and only take it over a period of years, that's not going to work for tax purposes. Oh boy. Oh, okay. But you know, get, uh, yeah, get with your CPA and work it all out. They'll explain it to you exactly. Thank you so much. Appreciate all it. All right. So. All right. So you're listening to Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law. Again, I'm Attorney Joe Pippen, practicing attorney. The law office is open. Hey, you can watch the show if you're interested on webeamtv.com. It's a live video presentation of the show. I it's uh, That happens every other week when I'm broadcasting from Tampa. And you can go to Webeam TV and see the show live. Also, we're doing it, uh, they also stream at the same time on Facebook. So if you uh, have a Facebook account, you can go to the uh, Ask an Attorney page. Or if you're a friend, my personal page, all of it's being streamed at the same time on Facebook. If you'd like to get connected with me on either Facebook or LinkedIn, you can do so. We also have a YouTube channel of the, uh, some of the uh, shows and other other video things I've done on TV and so forth. And you can look all this up under the name of Joseph F. Pippen Jr. Love to connect with you on any of those mediums, or maybe all of them. And uh, you can definitely watch the show on WeBeam TV or on Facebook Live uh, every other week when I'm broadcasting from Tampa. If you'd like to call the show, you have a toll-free number, 1-800. Uh, I'm sorry, call the show at 877 943 Nine six seven three. So the toll free number to call is eight seven seven nine four three nine six seven three. Phone lines are open. And uh, if you would like to um, receive that free poster sheet, again the toll free office number. If you want to do it that way, is the one eight hundred two two six three five two nine. That's one eight hundred two two six three five two nine. Well, phone lines are open right now. If you want to call the show, I'd be more than glad to talk to you. Your legal question can be just about anything. Why worry about it if you don't have to? You can get some, at least some information, get pointed in the right direction, and be more than glad to help you. And hopefully the answer to your question helps a lot of other people. A lot of people, <clears throat> for example, one of our questions this morning dealt with getting married and what the spouse's rights are. And if you have a current will, can you leave it to your home to your grandkids? Well, if you get married, guess what? That's not probably going to work because the spouse has certain spousal rights regarding the homestead. And they can definitely be, be waived and you can do whatever you want to with your spouse. But that probably, that was a good question for other people to, to learn from. Let's go to Ken and Largo. Hey, Ken. I um, ordered some vitamins. Um, heard an advertisement on the radio. And you ordered some what now? Vitamins. Vitamins, okay. Yeah. Um, and, and talking to a lady on, on the phone, um, I gave her my information and wanted one thing of them, and she said, well, you have to buy five. I said, what? And I, I said, well, I'm not so sure I don't have the money for that. And she said, well, you, you can have up to a week to um, to get back to us. Okay. I never, I never called back. I never uh, gave approval, and I got the vitamins, and they debited my um, my card. I talked to the bank about it, and they did an investigation, and they they um, their, what they came up with was that um, you know they people had a right to take it because they had my information, and um, so um, I was just wondering if there's anything I can can do to. To um, get, get things um, changed to well, what did the bank say that you they couldn't reverse the charge? Yeah, the bank um, in their investigation they they said that that um, I guess they came up with uh, you know that 
that uh, it was legitimate for the people to do. They couldn't. Um, they couldn't stop just, it or reverse it. Yeah. Have you received the items yet? Yes, I have. I haven't opened the package. Well, why don't you return them with a demand that they refund the money and uh, outline the discussion you had on the phone with the person? Okay. All right. Hopefully that'll work for you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Goodbye. All right. My producer has a question from a caller that didn't want to be online, I guess. Well, no, it was Rudy again. He had called back. Um, he had a question. Um, he said if he had a friend who is a... PCA does he need to be a PCA here or in a CPA a CPA sorry <laughs> PCA CPA yeah here. no the, the, it's a it's a uh, it's a federal tax question so the CPA can be anywhere gotcha I hope you heard okay. that Rudy thank you all right let's go to Ron in Jacksonville hi uh, Joe yes yes uh, I have a question I'm not sure I'm married and uh, you're not, not sure, sure if you're married you no, no, no. I meant my question. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Question. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how to set up my account. Should I be a joint or should we have separate accounts for, or bank accounts? Well, I didn't have to ask a bunch of questions to figure that out for you. So um, do you want to own the account jointly or do you want to keep it maintaining a separate account? Well, Because um, it's just a I, choice. It's just a choice on what you do. Yeah. I mean, you I can... Just, like, Worried about uh, maybe some, now I don't owe, own any, uh, owe anything to anybody, but in case creditors would try to mm -hmm. attach something on our accounts, I'm worried about that. How long have you been married? Oh, for uh, about forty years. Forty years? Yeah. Well, do you own most everything jointly? Uh, pretty much. Yeah. Well, most people married 40 years would just own a joint account unless there's some compelling reason not to. Mm -hmm. Some some yeah. married, some married couples that long own most things joint, but then they do have a they do have a separate account for for whatever reason they want just to uh to keep a little money on the side for their own personal, you know, self-use. Mm -hmm. I was just worried about uh creditors attaching, you know, trying to remove money if I ever owed anything. That's the only reason. Well, is your is that. your spouse a spendthrift? Hope she's not listening. No, no, no. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> uh, uh, well, a creditor could affect you know a jointly held asset between husband and wife, tenants by the entirety. It's called is not not subject to the creditors of just one of you. So a uh, creditor of you or a creditor of her cannot get to uh, an account owned by both of you, tenants by the entirety. Does that help? Uh, I'm still not sure which way to go on it, but uh, well, which uh, which way is the account right now? It's uh, right now. I did joint. I, I went to a joint account. I thought it would be better if I should uh, pass away or something like that. She'd have easy access, or or if I was sick or something. Well, like that. you you can have an individual account that just has her name as a beneficiary if you want. Yeah. Okay. All right. Seems I can go either way. All yes, right. sir. Yeah, it's just a personal choice. All right. Bye. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's go to Mike and Valrico. Um, yeah, mine, mine is a uh, kind of a, a, a you know a marriage type thing. Uh, we have two people who have different amounts of assets. Okay. Uh, I'm talking in terms of personal assets, like cash mm -hmm. as opposed to uh property you know i'm not too worried about the property thing but uh, let's let's uh, just for the sake of argument one has two hundred thousand dollars and another one has one hundred thousand dollars now you're you're married or getting married we're married okay we're married we're getting divorced okay and um we want to uh, uh I, I guess i want to know what uh, what liability I have or she has. Mm -hmm. um, well, how long have you been married? 28. Yeah, so there are different categories of years of marriage. So if you're married less than seven, there's some. Uh, there's one thing that happens. If you're married between seven and 17, it's another thing. But if you're married over 17, generally the... If everything was owned jointly, it would be basically split 50-50. And that might be a little bit oversimplified, but that's just a pretty much a general rule. Uh, okay. <clears throat> well, but it's 
not, or, we, we've actually kept three different accounts. I, I kept my checking account, she kept her checking account, and then we had a joint account where we paid the bills on them. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> no, but there's no premarital agreement or anything, and the money was all accumulated during the marriage. Is that right? Correct. So it's pretty much going to be a 50 50 split. 50 50 split. Unless y'all agree to something, you can agree to whatever you all can agree to. Uh huh. Get it in writing. That's a property settlement agreement, and that would be but, part of the divorce proceeding. But theoretically, um, uh, half. Uh, her asses. Let's say, let's say she has the two hundred thousand, and I have the one hundred thousand. All right. Uh, if we were to uh, simply divvy that up, it would be a hundred and a half a piece, right? Right. Okay, that's the legal position on it. Now, yeah, whether I want to go through with that or not. Yeah, y'all you know, can but, voluntarily agree to anything you want to, though, on the division. Well, good point. Now, does that include IRA money as well? Yes, that's going to be pretty much equalized as well. And there's so they're, they're not protected or um, or individualized or anything like that, right? They're protected from outside creditors, but not a spousal not a spousal creditor. Okay, good point. And then uh, if there was if there was property jointly held, okay. Mm -hmm. And one wants to leave and one wants to stay, who pays the mortgage? <laughs> that would have to be worked out. Okay. So. That would be another issue of. I would say if you've got to negotiate an agreement between the two of you, if someone wants to keep living in the house, that they would maintain the mortgage. But, you know, it depends on, that's, you can't really cheery pick one little question like that in the divorce proceeding because it's going to totally depend upon the income you have, the income she has. Well, we're both retired. Well, but, you're, you know, your Social Security could be 2000 a month and hers could be 800 though. So, I mean, they look yeah. at all of the income issues. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, okay. So, uh, then that issue should be... Uh, um, Negotiated again. All yeah, right. if y'all can work it out, then it get that gets uh, reduced to being on paper and in a contractual agreement, and that becomes part of the divorce proceeding. So the best thing to do to save money on attorney fees is to work out an agreement yourself and just take it to an attorney and have them have them formalize it. What would a, what would an attorney to cost uh, to? Uh... Uh, uh, every attorney fee is going to be different. So you're going to have to call a few and get a get a quote. Uh huh. What I mean, uh, you guys handle this, right? We, well, you're calling from uh, Del Rico. Del Rico. Right. Yeah, I have, a, I have an attorney that does nothing but family law. Her name is Catherine. Catherine is the name. Yep. So if you want to call our office and talk to Catherine, uh, just go seven two seven five eight six seven two seven five eight six six three three zero six three three zero six yeah seven two sevens uh. Pinellas, though, isn't it? Yeah, but she she does work in Hillsboro. She works in Hillsboro too. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, you basically answered the question uh, I had, so I right. appreciate that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Phone lines are open. If you'd like to call the show, you can call. Uh, you have about fifteen minutes left. Seven, sixteen, seventeen minutes left. You have a toll free number eight seven seven nine four three. 9673. That's 877 943 9673. Phone lines are open. Let's go to Stan in Sun City Center. Good hey. morning, Mr. Pippin. Hey, how are you? I'm fine. We had a trust, uh, revocable trust made up by your people, and my wife and I are, are co trustees, mm -hmm. and we have to a daughter and a son, mm -hmm. and they are the successor trustees. Okay. My question is, uh, it's a simple one, and I should know something about it, but I don't. What do I have to do or they have to do to avoid any taxes, if we can do that, on when they inherit our uh, state? Well, the tax exemption that you and your spouse have are $11.4 million each. Eleven point four million dollars each. So unless you have more than that, you're not going to have to worry about a federal estate tax. And Florida has no state estate tax. So let me get that: no estate tax in Florida, right? Right. 
So on the federal side, there's no federal estate tax if you have less than $11.4 million. So the only tax that would, your kids would be subject to would be uh, untaxed income. Like if you have a retirement account and the money only gets taxed when it comes out, if it comes out to you, you pay the income tax. If it comes out to them, they would pay the income tax on the withdrawal from the retirement account. But there is no... We, we the, have small IRAs. Yeah, so there's not so going to be... I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about the other assets. Well, the other assets come out tax-free. Is that right? Yeah, you get you, wow. get, you get to leave eleven point four million dollars tax free. Eleven point four million. Right. If you're under that, it's tax free. Yes, sir. Does that mean that if it's over eleven point eleven point four million, the first eleven point four million would be tax free, and the rest would be taxable? Yeah, but you you have an eleven point four million dollar exemption. Your wife has an eleven point four million. Oh, exemption. now we're at twenty two point eight. Yes, sir. Hey, that's very good. I'm I, I'm glad to hear that. All right, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. You, you too. Phone lines are open at 877-943-9673. Our producer wants to uh, ask me a question. Yes, now. someone called in and just want to know, by any chance, if you know where Catherine's show is now on air. Catherine's not doing radio presently. So uh, Catherine is our family law attorney. And her mother uh, passed away, so she's taking a little leave from radio. Uh, don't have a date when she's going to come back. She has been an often guest on my show, and the invitation for her to come back here too as well. But uh, she's on a little sabbatical from radio right now. Let's go to Gloria in Jacksonville. Hey, Gloria. Yes, sir. I'm. I, my husband and I have a trust. Mm-hmm. You have separate trust or joint trust? Separate. Okay. And we want to, ch they were done in 211. We want to change them to where if when I die, I leave everything to him if he's still alive, and he leaves everything to me if he dies first. That would just be a simple amendment. Okay. So where is your, I went to somebody here in Jacksonville, and they wanted $1,500 to just do that. I thought that was a little high. Well, my office, I have several offices I can meet you, so you could call me and we could figure out where, but uh, where I meet most of my clients is in the Ponte Vedra area. Okay. I have uh, office, I have use of an office there right in the Ruth Chris building. Oh, okay, I know where that is. There's an office building to the side of that, but you have to call and make an appointment for uh, for Jacksonville. I will. What, what, what is the number I call to make an appointment? Uh, just call my toll-free number, 1-800-226-3529. Uh -huh. Okay. Go to extension 200. All and right. the young lady that answers the phone there uh, runs my calendar as well. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Phone lines are open. We have about 12 minutes left in the show. We do have time for your call. You can call at 877-943-9673. That's 877-943-9673. Phone lines are open. Let's go to Valerie in Lake Alfred. Hello, sir. Uh, my name is Valerie. Uh, I have a son that's incarcerated in Virginia at this time, mm -hmm. and he worked for uh, a, a food company that was holding his pension. Mm -hmm. And... Um, he, he. This happened back in 2014. He gave his wife's power of attorney. Now she took over 300,000 in cash out of all of his accounts early in the in the when he she had the power of attorney. And I went up there and I got the paperwork, took it to the uh, took it to the jail, notary public with him. They signed everything, and I sent I brought it over to Washita Parish, which is in Louisiana where the other power of attorney was, and I had this power of attorney revoked. Mm -hmm. Now, in the meantime, he has sent me another complete power of attorney because he's wanting me to try to get a hold of his pension that he was supposed to still have in this uh, food company, and it could come close to $70,000. And come to find out, his wife, uh, the revoke of her uh, power of attorney was in 2014 in October. She divorced him in 2015, and in 2017, she pulled out nearly seventy thousand dollars out of his pension. Mm -hmm. 
And so, therefore, she had no business. It was By there. using the revoked power of attorney? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she had no business. Uh, she had no business getting that money. Did she get notification of the revocation of the power of attorney? I don't know that. Well, her, my my son told me that he had mailed her a letter. Now, whether she read it or not, I don't know. But in Washita Parish, they when I asked them when I put that paperwork in, they told me they do not get in touch with the people if you get a revoked power of attorney. But either either way, she was divorced from him in 2015. Well, listen, it, um, the answer is she. You turn it <clears throat> turn it over to a state attorney for invest for for a criminal investigation, uh, and or you file a lawsuit to get the money back. Okay. Well, I was wondering, do I have to get a a, a lawyer in Louisiana, or can I get a corporate lawyer here in Florida? No. More than likely, she's going to have to be sued uh, where she's located. Okay, the thing, the, pro, the problem is, wasn't it the, the foods company's responsibility, their fiduciary responsibility, to hold that pension for my son? He worked for them. Well, not, you see, she sounds like to me she illegally used the power of attorney. Okay. So she, they had some justification to let her use it because she had a power of attorney that could possibly do what she did. But the other thing is you can't really use a power of attorney to uh, benefit yourself. It's power of attorney you're giving to benefit, giving someone the power to benefit you uh -huh. by the use of it. So she did totally improper thing. Whether the company's liable or not is questionable. But the main thing is that she acted, um, she's a thief, really. I mean, you can't use the power of attorney to benefit yourself. And she was divorced. And she, if she had read the letter, it would have been revoked. Uh, the safest thing to do when a power attorney is revoked, though, is to send it to all the places where you fear it might be used. So they, they are put on notice. If they were put on notice, then they would have some liability. Well, U.S. US Foods is the company that I'm talking about, and they were put on notice. My son sent a letter to them saying that that power of attorney had been revoked. Well, that had been. So the, the action had already taken place? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, the action no, had taken place. You need to put them on notice ahead of time, though, see? Okay. What I have done is I sent a letter to the man who owns U.S. Foods. I mm -hmm. sent also a faxed copy to uh, U.S. Foods where he was working in Louisiana, and I also uh, sent a, a mailed a letter to them, too. So they were getting it two ways. The owner was getting it. Were they notified the after the fact or before the fact, though, the power of attorney was revoked? Well, I just, uh, number one, we didn't know the money was even out of there until okay. I had Okay, well, that's the point. That's the point. You notified them afterwards. So whether they are liable or not, it's debatable, you know. So what what you need to do is to hire an attorney to look into what you need to do. And what you need to do is either file a lawsuit against her, and the attorney can decide whether it's worthwhile going after the company. And you, you know, it might be that you go after both. But you know you're gonna you've done everything you can do, so you need to have an attorney do the rest now. Okay, well the attorney's wanting to go after her, but the thing of it is, chances are she spent the money. U.S. Food has deep pockets. They're they're a billion dollar company. I've looked them up online. Okay, so they're the ones with the deep pockets, and I figured that they were the ones with the fiduciary responsibility to hold that money for my son. Unless there was, a, you know. Yeah, but the power attorney gave the daughter the legal right to probably access the money. And but that was back in 2014. It was revoked. All right. and it, she didn't get it till 2017. That's three years later. All right. So I think the bottom line here is, is that if the corporation was not, and your attorney might have told you this, and your attorney that would file the lawsuit, you have to convince an attorney. To do this, the attorney's not going to do it unless you have a valid case. Uh, so I don't know why you're arguing with me about this, but oh, sir, I'm not arguing. Yeah, I'm just but trying to find out what I can do for for myself. Well, and uh, you have to find an attorney that would take the case and think, and you prove to the attorney, or the attorney looks at it and comes to the conclusion they were liable for what they did. And if the attorney looks at it and says, "Well, nobody notified them ahead of time." That the power of attorney was revoked. That might that might be why the attorney's not taking the case. I see. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your time, sir. All right. Thank you.
You're listening to Ask an Attorney all about Florida law. We have about five minutes left in the show. You could definitely call the show at 877-943-9673. Let's go to Bobby. Hey, Bobby. Yes. I wanted to to ask you, um, I had a cousin, and she made up a will, and she said that uh, I'm going to leave my house uh, to my sister and everything else and that to come, go to Bobby. Mm-hmm. And uh, she had about... So this 12, was all verbal. You never 12, saw anything in writing that way. Excuse me? This was all verbal. You never really saw anything in writing. No, 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 no. She had it in a will. And you saw the will? Yes. I had a copy of the will. The attorney yeah. had a copy of the will. And how long, and, and uh, how long ago was that? Uh, uh, give or take us seven, eight years. All right, and, Bobby, and what I was con- yeah, go ahead. What I was, con- what I was concerned about there was twelve thousand dollars that the government owed her, mm-hmm. and they wouldn't give it to me. They gave it to her sister. But I had power of attorney, everything. I took care of while she was sick, and so I think this. You know, I got the house. She left me a house and some property. I got that, but them twelve thousand dollars. Uh, the government well, say they didn't honor a will. And what's the purpose of a will if you don't honor it? Well, I don't know why they wouldn't honor a will. Was there a probate? No, there wasn't no probate. Well, they're only going to honor a will if there was you were named as personal representative in the will and you filed the will and the death certificate and got appointed by the court as the personal representative. Okay, well, we, we never did go into any court or anything. Um, you so, know, yes, I'm not, I'm not going to know how the government was approached and what was given to them to make them give her the money. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to have enough information to be able to answer they, the question. She was the closest, she was the closest of kin. She's like a stepsister. All right. Well, let's assume that the will was never filed with the court. The probate was never established. The sister uh, filed some papers saying there was no will, and she's the closest relative, so the IRS used all that somehow or another to give her the money. If the will had been filed and you had been appointed the personal representative, then you'd have official papers from the court to give to the government. You would have you would have gotten the money into the estate. If the will was never filed and never a uh, will was never probated or started, then something else might have happened to allow the government to be justified to give her the money. Bobby, you're calling from where? I'm calling from Sarasota. Okay. All right, but that's the only thing I can think of to help you, Bobby, is to understand what might have happened. Okay, there's nothing I can do about it Well, it's been seven years ago now, so you might be able to try, but it's going to be much more difficult because you waited so long. Okay, then. All All right, right, then. Thank you. Uh Uh-huh. You're listening to Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law. I'm Attorney Joe Pippen, practicing attorney. If you would like to contact our office, maybe make an appointment, get a free review of your present estate planning documents or talk about estate planning or whatever other legal issue you might have, we have a toll-free office number, 1-800-226-3529. That's 1-800-226-3529. That's extension 200 you would go to to either make an appointment, phone appointment, office appointment, or just for me, you have a question for me off the line here. If you'd like to receive our free estate planning poster sheet, you can call that toll-free number, 1-800. It's a full-size sheet with lots of information about estate planning. If you're thinking about doing some estate planning or want things reviewed, this would be a good starting point. Be glad to mail it to you, no cost. You call one 800 226 3529. That's 1-800-226-3529. You can email me at joe, J-O-E, at A-T-T-Y, P-I-P dot com. That's joe at A-T-T-Y, P-I-P dot com. You can text me at 727-667-3967. And by the way, I'm available for speaking engagements. I love going out in the community, giving talks, answering questions. We had a talk uh, at the Chamber of Commerce in Sun City Center. We started off just taking questions, 65 minutes of just question after question after question. If you have a group that would like to uh, have me come to your group, please give us a call. Again, 
226-3529. Hey, you have a great weekend. So long.